It's not just singing with your vocal cords and who hits the best note. It's not anything like that. It's all about what comes from your spirit and your heart. David says, with my whole heart, I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I invite you now with your whole heart to praise God, to lift him up. Amen. It is his desire to bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't like it. So I'm going to welcome those who are here to sit, to stand, wherever you choose. To take your place, um, if you want to sit on the floor, or if you want to sit, um, you want to stand, you want to stay here, you want to flag, you want to lie down, you want to go to the back. Whatever God puts on your heart, you want to do is your form and your posture of worship. This is the place of freedom. Amen. Amen. So go ahead and just, just worship him. I think this is burnout, but I can still see. It needs to be this just needs to be plugged in, but I can see it. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 
Yes, I know. 
days as we've seen your faithful love take us through every storm every dark night Jesus we've seen your faithfulness through every lie that the enemy breathed you came through just like you said you were Father your faith Father your soul
and helps you pray and ask for what you should ask for. So we ask in accordance to the will of God exactly what where he wants to minister to us because he knows exactly what we need. He knows what we need, and he is here to minister to our need because it's the anointing that's locating your need. Hallelujah. And we're all learning more and more about the anointing, right? Yes. Woo! The anointing is everything. The anointing is how the kingdom is set up. The kingdom of God is set up by his power and his authority. His rule and his reign that he distributes then to his people as needed. Amen? Amen? And so that's why all of us, all of us should desire the anointing so we can reign in life through Jesus. So that never, ever, one time in our life now, from this time forward, don't look back, by the way, don't look back. But that from this time forward, there is never a reason for you ever to be under the circumstances. For you to be under the weather. For you to be under the enemy's heel. He is under our circumstances or under our authority. Even the weather, so to speak, is under our authority. You know what I'm saying? Like the mood, the temperature, the atmosphere. Like you don't have to be overwhelmed by, oh, there's so much darkness in the world. The Lord says you're the light. Shine. Amen. Shine. Let the anointing shine where you are. Bring the light into the darkness. Perhaps I sent you into a place where there's darkness so you can shine. Not just be around a bunch of other lights. That's what this is for. This is where we get recharged, right? Yeah, yeah, this is where we all plug in our chargers and we get charged with that anointing. But then we go out of here like super bright, like 100% charged, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone. I know some of you have driven a long way. Some of you have driven through traffic <laughs> to get here tonight. Some of you have worked today. Some of you have, have, have done all kinds of things today. And yet you took time to come here tonight. And I'm so blessed to see that you have done this. Amen. And I'm really excited to see you here. I love all of you. Even those of you watching online. And the anointing is here to minister God's love to you. I never want you to forget the greatness of his love for you. That's the foundation of everything in the kingdom. It's called the kingdom of his love. Without love, we have no kingdom of God. But God is love. God is love. So the love, God in us, drives out all fear. So if you came in tonight with fear, that demon has to go. Amen. Amen. In fact, every demonic spirit, every sickness has to come under the authority of the anointing here tonight. Amen. Doesn't have authority here tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. And even as you have come in this place tonight, you have come to put yourself under the shadow of God's wings. The covering of the anointing of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. So um, this will be our last week of just going over um, the messages that I've prepared. And um, we will be going over chapter by chapter in Apostle Catherine's book. Um, and they're for sale on the back there. I have the price wrong. They're $16. Okay, they're because we did buy them uh, off of Amazon, so they were $16 off of Amazon. So uh, if you want to buy a book, you can go ahead and just put the money and put it here in the basket. I would like everybody to have a book next week. If you cannot afford a book, let me know and we'll see about getting you one, okay? But we are going to go through the chapters in this book. So, um, like I said, next week we are going to go over the very first chapter. So I would like you to get a book tonight, and the very first chapter is, what is the anointing? And that's the great place to start. What is the anointing? We haven't discussed that in church my whole life, and 
I don't know that it's been, there's been a lot of books written on the anointing. Um, there's been books written about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's been books written upon the authority of Christ and speaking, you know, the word of God over your situation, things like that. But there has not been that I know of a powerful book that's relevant for today on the anointing. And so um, I, I would want everybody to get a book tonight. And if you can't pay tonight, just bring in some other time at service. But there should be um, there should be enough books here for everybody to get one. If you don't already have one, okay? Amen. We love you. We're so excited. We're so excited. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so tonight, I love the Holy Spirit, and I love how he talks to me, and I love how he tells me exactly what he wants to release um, on these nights of boring women, and then when I teach on Wednesdays, right? Amen. So this is a question I believe many people have had, uh, is how to discern between if you need deliverance from a demon or... It's your flesh, and you need to walk in obedience and crucify the flesh. There is a difference. So in the churches that I attended and went to prior to now, um, and even in the church that we've pastored here now since 2011, up until the revelation of the anointing and deliverance, I wouldn't have been able to tell you the difference mm -hmm. between your flesh, the old nature, mm -hmm. and do you need deliverance? Mm -hmm. Most people have not been taught that in church because in churches, by and large, they haven't taught deliverance. Um, <clears throat> and even if you've seen it somewhat, it can be really um, worked. I mean, there there are there are places that that do deliverance where that they wrestle people to the ground, where they have you know groups of people like screaming at the person, and, and and that's not how Jesus did. Just to let you know, he is the one we follow. It's not how Paul did it. It's not how Peter did it. In fact, Jesus said. <clears throat> If you see demons come out by the finger of God, then you'll know the kingdom Amen. has come. Amen. Because the devil's no match for the anointing. I mean, the devil scares many Christians. Oh boy, the devil's really attacking me. And they have long conversations about how the devil's attacking them. But we don't have long conversations about how they took authority over the enemy and said, no, you do not reign here. You do not have a place in my home. You don't have a place in my life. We haven't seen that by and large. Most of the time we've heard Christians scared of demons. And, and then the world is out there embracing them in the form of different types of cults, different types of um, new age teachings that have crept indeed into the church. They even say there's such thing as Christian yoga, and there's not. And so we, we, we've not had this revelation clear cut. This is demonic possession. This is, or you can say oppression, possession. It's a demon in that person. That's it. Whatever you want to call it. Possession means ownership. And I don't believe the demon owns anybody. Unless you sold your soul to him. You know, but I don't really believe demons own Christians. Because Christians are bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus. The demon is living rent free. That's what he's doing. Or she or whatever. And then there's also the other side of the 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 revelation of the flesh. Mm. That's the old nature. You can't cast that. No. It has to be crucified. Right. So many times in church we've told people just crucify the flesh and they're like, but I got it. I, there's something. I hear voices at night. Mm. I mean, if a spirit spouse came, a demonic spirit spouse came to somebody at night and touched them in the middle of their night, in the night, and did things to them while they were in bed, and they went and told their pastor who didn't believe that demons do that, they would say 5150, we're going to behavioral health. Do you need some pills? Yeah. They would say you're crazy. That's right, they would. But we know now that you're not crazy if that happens. We know that that really does happen. Yes. Yes. And if you are not 
under the anointing where the power of God is flowing. Mm -hmm. You could be made fun of. You could be ostracized. You could be humiliated. The whole women's group would laugh at you if you brought that up in the prayer group. They might think that you are demon possessed and they need to stay away from you. Instead of that, something's coming and attacking you. If something's coming and attacking you, the body of Christ ought to know we need to get you to where the anointing is and we need to get this out. If an intruder is trying to break into your home Mm -hmm. and you're upstairs Mm -hmm. and you hear that door shaking, you're going to get on your phone and you're going to dial 911. And you're going to get the police out there with weapons Mm -hmm. to stop that person. That's the same principle as in the spirit realm. But by that time, someone's probably already inside tormenting you. And you can't get that out by counseling. Mm-hmm. You can't get that out by just having a couple of good friends. You, you need to be delivered. Mm-hmm. This is now, I've seen this now for, what, 26 months. I've seen it. I've seen it here. I've watched it at 5 hours. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a great revelation for you tonight, okay? Mm-hmm. So what, what is a demon? A disembodied spirit of a Nephilim. Not a fallen angel. Angels don't go live in people's lives. It's, it really doesn't matter if you know that or not, but somebody who wants to debate you will probably, well, now is it an angel or is it a... You know what? Just don't even talk to that person at that point. <laughs> A disembodied spirit of a Nephilim, which was half fallen angel and half human being. It used to have a body to live in. You have to understand that. It used to live in a body. This is not some just spirit that never had a home. It actually had a home in a body at one time. Those were the half people that had to die in the flood of Noah's time. But since that body has died, it strongly desires to dwell in a person. It, if it has no body, it roams the dry places looking for a person to inhabit. Demons really can't do much Robin, you can come sit here, dear. Demons really can't do much without a human body. It's kind of like um, it wants to be like a hand in a puppet, right? God works through people. The devil works through people. If he can get people to do his will, which he does, the scripture says he's taken people captive to do his will, then he can get his will done on the earth, as we know. But if God can come inside and fill your heart with the spirit of the living God and begin to transform you, deliver you from demonic spirits that possibly were there, Begin to restore your soul, like David says in Psalm 23. Then all of a sudden, you're walking in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Then if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't fear evil anymore. Because you know God is with you. You now know him. He's your, now your shepherd. He becomes your Lord. And you begin to say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And David, the shepherd, became a mighty warrior for God because of his relationship with God. That is true for your life. But you have to let go of the demonic. If there are demonic spirits in there, you must say, okay, I'm not playing church anymore. I don't care. I'm going to go where I can get these demons out. That's being relevant today. The churches that are irrelevant, that won't do this, that won't walk in the anointing, they are going to dissolve. 
and they have to. Don't be sad. They're all going to be given a chance. It's first going to go to the pastors. It's first going to go to the leaders. And they're going to be given a chance. And then if they say no, God says, but those are my sheep. And you were supposed to take care of my sheep. And, and you chose to re resist the revival. I will bring them to where the revival is. And the moment they get set free, they'll say, I'm never going back to that old powerless lukewarm church again. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So Matthew 12, 43 through 45. When a demon is cast out of a person, it roams around a dry region, looking for a place to rest, but never finds it. Then it says, so it can speak, I'll return to the house I moved out of. And so it goes back, only to find that the house is vacant, warm, and ready for it to move back in. Verse 45, so it goes looking for seven other demons more evil than itself, and they all enter together to live there. Then the person's condition becomes much worse than it was in the beginning. This describes what will also happen, Jesus said, to the people of this evil generation. So Jesus tells us exactly what happens when a demon is cast out? It goes to a dry region, which means no warm body. It wants flesh and blood. At one time, it had a flesh and blood body. Could have been in a male body, could have been in a female body. But it wants to live in a body so it can attempt to feel what it used to feel back in the day before it was killed. It can't go to heaven. It will never go to heaven. And it has not yet been sent to hell. If you remember, there was um, a time in the scripture where Jesus was in his ministry and demons cried out of a person. The person didn't say this. The demons cried out of the person using their voice. Did you come to torment us before the time? They know they're going to be tormented. They know they're going to hell. They know that. They don't want to go before the time. See, even they know they're subject to God's timetable. They know. And Jesus didn't send them to hell, did he? No, he did not. In fact, at one point, Jesus sent an entire legion of demons into pigs. And the pigs committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a demon. Demons tell you to commit suicide. Right. A pig would never commit suicide. They love to wallow around in the mud. They don't want to die. No. I've never seen an animal commit suicide. Never. No. They just don't do it. Never. But the demons went into the pigs and the whole herd of pigs jumped off the cliff and drowned in the water. Mm -hmm. And then the demons were free. They didn't want to be a pig. They wanted to be a person. But the crazy thing was, is all these demons, there were thousands, were in one man. So don't think that like it's all jammed up and they're all packed in there like sardines. They're in a spirit realm. But what had happened to that man for all those demons to come into him? Now, what was his life like? Well, we know that when Jesus landed on that, that shoreline of Gadarenes, this man approached him who was known to be the crazy man of that area. There was 10 cities in that area called the Decapolis, 10 pretty well-known cities. And this man was very well known for roaming the graveyards. Mm -hmm. So maybe the demons that came out of dead people, because when people die, demons don't stay in that dead body. They don't want to, they don't want to stay in a, tomb, a coffin. Perhaps the demons came out of the dead bodies and the man was willing, come on into me. And he had no way to pull them back. Mm -hmm. So just demons, demons, demons came into him. The man was naked. <clears throat> the people tried to chain him because he was, he would cry out and howl in the night and cause all kind of havoc. But he stripped his clothes off. The demons made him take his clothes off. He was out of his mind. They 
that he even operated in this supernatural strength. Have you, I don't know, probably most of you have heard of PCP. They called it yeah. angel dust back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It's a drug that when you take it, sometimes it manifests in this superhuman strength. Yeah. Right. Where like you could throw five police officers off of you and you're a 160 pound guy. Yeah. yeah. It's a demon. Like your muscles didn't grow by taking that. It's the demons in the drug, attached to the drug, oh, that yeah. causes a person to have this superhuman strength. Yeah. So this man would break any chain they would tie him up with, like heavy chains. Mm -hmm. I mean, leather straps, no problem, but like chains he would break. Yeah. He would cut himself. You ever known anybody who cut themselves? Demon. People don't want to cut themselves. People don't like to cause inflict self inflicted wounds. No. It's demons. Mm -hmm. So when this man approached Jesus, he came to Jesus right. as he landed on the shore. And you must know that when Jesus got in the boat from the other side after feeding the 5,000, he knew where he was going. He was coming to set this man free, even though it was right. it was unknown to the disciples. Amen. He was coming for the man. Because the anointing will locate the need. None of the religious people could cast demons out of this man. They probably just wanted to get rid of him. He was a problem. Nobody could go have a funeral because there he'd show up. Screaming and hollering, acting like an insane person. But he was somebody's son. Amen. Come on. Somebody loved him. That's right. Jesus loved him. Hallelujah. And God loved him. And Jesus took his disciples to show them one or thousands they all have to obey. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, What is your name? He didn't ask any other person that we know of who had demons, what is your name? He wasn't asking the person, he was asking the demon. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, our name is Legion because we are many, yeah. Yeah. which could have been thousands. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus didn't say that because he really cared about knowing their name and that was going to give him more authority to cast the demon out, demons out. He wanted his apostles to know. One or thousands, Amen. they all have to go in my name. Watch how I do it. He was always giving examples. Amen. He was always Amen. demonstrating. Yeah. This is how you're going to do it when I go. Amen. So he told the demons to leave, and they begged, please send us into the pigs. Right. And he obliged. Mm -hmm. He let them go into the pigs. You know why he did it? It was a teaching lesson for the apostles. It's not because he's having sympathy for demons. <laughs> no, no. He was showing the apostles, this is what they're capable of. This is what you could encounter. I want you to know this. I want you to recognize that this could happen as you're ministering to people. And the demons came out, went into the pigs. The pigs committed suicide. And then they began to Jesus and his disciples, the man took off. They, they began to get their stuff together and they, whatever they were doing, the man disappeared, but then they came back and here's the man. Here's the man. Hi, Jesus! <laughs> Hi! He's dressed. His hair's cold. His face is washed. He's smiling. He's talking. He's talking, not demons. He says, Hi! Can I go with you? I, I could could I go on the boat with you? I want to go back with you, and I want to I don't want to leave you. Yeah, and I believe Jesus looked at the man. Mm. See, Jesus to me is so real. Yeah, yes, so real. Yes, yes. I believe Jesus went and held him by his shoulders, and looked at him in his face, and said, "I love you. Mm. You need to go testify. You got ten cities to tell about the love of God." And just cast the thousands of demons out of you. Hallelujah. You got it. Don't go do it. Your testimony is going to set so many people free yeah. and bring them into the kingdom. Amen. 
to the bank and said, I will too. And you know, that man went to 10 cities. He began hitting one, two, three, and all hit them all 10 up. And they see, he says, remember the guy you heard about in the tombs? That was me. That's me. But Jesus came and set me free. Jesus came unto the shore one day when I was naked and wounded and bleeding and cut up and ch chained and my hair was grows out of my mind. I just wanted to die. I never had any rest. I was awake night and day. Now this Jesus is the son of God. He set me free and the kingdom is come. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You see, the power of casting out demons is the grace of God in anybody's life. It's the grace of God. Don't let religious people talk you out of your deliverance. Don't let them say, no, no, Christians can't be possessed. No, no, don't go back to that church again. No, Christians can't have demons. Don't go back there again. And then they'll, if you stay around them long enough, yeah. you're on fire. They'll just keep pouring cold water into yeah. you until pretty soon you're just lukewarm. You're like, maybe it, maybe it wasn't real. Maybe, maybe I should stay away. Then the demons come back with seven more. Because the religious people clean and swept the house for you. Swept the Holy Spirit right out. Swept the power of God right out. Snuffed out that fire. Don't you dare come in here with that fire of God. We don't allow that in this place. This place is dead and it's staying that way. <laughs> I mean, it's really, that's really what's happening. If you can hear the read between the lines, right? Like we're lukewarm and we, we don't want any of that hot stuff in here. Things get out of control at that point. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so they'll clean, sweep you up, get you all squared away. Oh no, I'm I'm so glad, you know, you're you're not in that in that church anymore. You know, I'm I'm glad you're not bipolar anymore. I'm glad you're not manic depressive anymore. I'm glad you're not, you know, chewing people's arms off at church. I'm so glad. I'm so glad, you know, you're not mean anymore. But give it a few months and the devil comes back knocking. Ooh, and behind that demon, the demon's looking in the windows, looking at the door, going, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Woo! Oh! I want that kid. But I gotta seal the deal now, so I got seven more demons more evil than me, mm -hmm. worse than me. I got my whole gang. Yeah. And we're coming in. Tap, tap, tap. Hi, remember me? Oh, no, no, you have to go. Oh, well, you don't have any power to resist me. So, whoosh! I'm back in! And then, and then, if you're in the lukewarm church, and then you got all these, then you got at least eight or more in you, or whatever the number is. And then you start acting up again. They're like, "See, you didn't get a demon cast out, because now you're acting crazy again, and you're even worse than you were before." Don't go back to that place again. We need to take you to a good counselor, a good psychiatrist. We need to get you on some heavy duty pills. Oh, you need, you need, you know, if you have 10 milligrams, now you need 500. You know, we, we need to get you sedated. Like, you're crazy now. It's because of that church you went to. No, it's because the demons came back, and nobody knows what to do with them here. Hallelujah. So, when you understand what a demon is, that it's literally a spirit that's disembodied, then you're like, well, okay. I'm not going to try to take my old wine skin and make figure this out with my old wine skin. I'm just going to throw it away. Amen. Toss it. Get rid of that old wine skin. I go, you know what, Pastor Heather? You just read the scripture to me, and I'm taking that scripture at face value. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Right? You do that, you happy are you? Happy are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll be way further along than the Pharisee who's been reading uh, dead stuff for 50 years. <laughs> so now that is what a demon is. What is the flesh or the self-life? Same, same, okay? It is the old nature that came from Adam's fall. It is unregenerated and cannot be redeemed. It must be crucified. This is part of our soul, and it works against our born-again spirit, the Holy Spirit within us. 
to try to continue to rule in our lives. Galatians 5, 16, 17 says, Paul writes, let me emphasize this. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life, the flesh. When your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit, you hinder him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your self-life from dominating you. So then the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation life of the Spirit. But what you need to be very solid in is realizing that you are a three-part being. Mm -hmm. You are a spirit. Mm -hmm. You have a soul. And your spirit and your soul live in your physical body. So when I say the flesh, I'm not talking about your hand or your arm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the self-life, the old nature that every single one of us inherited from Adam. Right. When Adam fell in the garden, his innocence and purity fell as well, and so did Eve. So they couldn't pass on to us anything but that. That is the nature we were all born with. The sweetest little baby still has a flesh and a self-life. And that self-life operates in the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. Now when you get born again, your spirit man comes alive and the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. And from there, he wants to rule in your life because he wants to bring you the life of God, the life you were made to live. See, you are created to carry the Holy Spirit. You are created to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. The holy of holies on earth is, is supposed to be in you and me. The most holy place on earth. It's not in a building. It's in the spirit of a believer. And when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, when you're born again, you're sealed unto God. It's like a safe being shut. It'll never be opened. The Spirit of God comes into your spirit and awakens your spirit, which was dead before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to say this again. Jesus did not come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. Alive. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He didn't just say that about Lazarus and a, and a and because his physical body had died, you got to know Lazarus' soul and spirit never died that, that those four days. They were not dead. Mm -hmm. In fact, your spirit and your, your, if you're born again, your spirit and your soul will never die. Yeah. Never die. Never die. Never die. But when Jesus says, I'm the resurrection, he says, I'm kind, I'm came to wake up spirits. Wake up spirits. Wake up. Wake up spirits. Wake up. Wake up. The spirit breathes upon your spirit and you wake up. Yeah. You wake up. And many times we, 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 we're in the process even of waking up in our soul going, oh, I, I need to come into submission to the spirit now. I've been in submission to that old self life uh -oh. my whole life. Ooh. Whoa. That's why the flesh, the old self life, wars against the spirit. Because the flesh must be crucified. Rendered as dead, the spirit must continually be given the authority in our life. That should be like the engine. That's where everything good comes from in our life is our spirit. Like we can't even pray without the Holy Spirit. But with the Holy Spirit, we can pray. God can take our weak little prayers. The Holy Spirit will make amazing prayers. Amen. And then he'll go, hey, pray like this. Even a groan can reach the throat. God, he hears that. The Spirit of God inside of you says, I'm groaning. That's why we always want to pray in tongues. When you're praying in tongues, you're praying from your spirit, not your mind. So when you come up here and you're like, 
You're trying to do it through here. It's never going to come through here. It's never, ever, ever going to come through here. If it had to come through here, it would not be of the spirit. It's coming from your spirit. You're just not used to praying with your spirit. You can get used to that. Practice. Pray in the spirit every day. Literally, when you pray in the spirit, you're edifying yourself. You're edifying your spirit. You're edifying your soul. You're edifying your body. You can pray in the spirit, and your body all of a sudden starts feeling energy. You're like, wow, I was really tired before. <laughs> See, i got to get in my shower. i got to get to work. I'm, like, oh, I'm going to do my hair today. I was just going to throw it back in. I'm going to go, get it done. Get it done. you got energy. you got time. You're not dragging anymore. Hallelujah. You're not dragging. You're not lagging. Because the Spirit of God literally brings God's vitality to you. The scripture says, he or she who sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit be God's vitality, everlasting life. That means you literally have the life that's flowing from the throne of God flowing through you. So you can do supernatural things. You can do things that other people can't do. They're going to say, how do you have so much energy? Yeah. It's by the Spirit. Yeah. Like, I'm plugged in. Like, you can be plugged in all the time. Plug in. Plug in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Spirit revives your body. Yeah. Your soul makes you happy. Yeah. The Spirit's yeah. not grumpy. The Spirit's not mean. <laughs> he's, not, he's not depressed. <laughs> he doesn't go lay down in the bed and pull the covers over his head. No, the spirit says, "Let's get going. We got work to do. We got a kingdom. We got a kingdom. You're part of the kingdom." Hallelujah! The spirit searches the deep things of God and reveals them to us. How can we know what what is on God's mind? What is in God's heart? What is God thinking about? Holy Spirit, tell me what God's thinking about me right now. What does he think about my circumstance? What does he think about my situation? He'll use the word of God and he'll give you a rhema word, which means a word spoken, a word breathed, a God breathed word. In fact, the, the word for spirit is ruach, R U A C H in Hebrew, ruach. It's the breath of God. Every time we breathe, the breath of God. Breath of God. Breath. Of God. That's what happened here tonight was the wind. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you felt him. Amen. You felt him. His presence. <clears throat> so now, back to our, our page. Demons operate through our flesh, our old nature, our self-life, and our body. Demons got a stronghold in Adam and Eve, and they like to have a stronghold in every human being they can. Okay? So, <clears throat> demons can come into us through various ways. And I've got a few written down here. These are some of the main ways they come in. Generational curses. Witchcraft done in past generations. Oaths made in previous generations. Open doors to cults and false religions from our ancestors. Covenants made in past generations. Money paid to healers, cults, Freemasonry, psychics, mediums, etc. Demons can be passed from one generation to the next while the person is living or dead. So many times if we have a, a woman here or a, or a man and their parent is here, we'll go to the parent. Would you like to renounce? Because obviously something came through you or came through your spouse if you know about that. So you might know something great grandma did. You've never even told the child. The child could be 40. You've never told your daughter that. Why don't you want to tell my daughter about what my great grandma did? Well, now you need to tell because it's manifesting in your daughter's life or your son's life. So just come clean. I mean, let's get this stuff out. Let's get it out. Don't worry about being hum uh, humiliated. Don't worry about being humiliated, okay? Let's just, let's just get everybody free and delivered. And so... That's a very, very important thing that it can come while somebody's still alive on earth, or maybe they're already gone. But if you know what it is, God will show you what it is. Demons also come in through witchcraft. That's that's the person now. Not not even not even maybe generations past, but 
You got involved in it. You got sucked in at some point. Witchcraft, participation in any form of witchcraft, black or white magic, new age, astrology, astral projection, seances, palm reading, etc. All types of witchcraft. Yeah. Um, or word curses. Demons can come in through word curses. <laughs> Words of negativity or death spoken to you or by you. They know life and death is in the power of the tongue. They know that. Uh, demons can come in through soul ties, ungodly relationships, and spirit spouses. And demons can come in through sex, entering through sexual relationships with others outside of a godly marriage. So you might have had sex with somebody uh, when you were 17, and now you're 50, and that, that thing is still there. That demonic spirit is still there, and 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 it can it can rise up in your marriage. It can rise up in your uh, thoughts. It can come to you. We have a chair right here. Jim. It can come to you uh, and manifest in you and attack you and harm you and hurt you and mess with your mind and mess with your physical body, mess with your marriage, mess with your identity mess with all kinds of things so those are all ways demons can enter and those can all be renounced mm -hmm. all be renounced and you're like we're not supposed to talk about that you should just get it out this is not about being humiliated this is about getting delivered and getting free right amen and so that's how demons can enter now the flesh though is present in every human being since we will we were all born from Adam's nature. Romans 5:17. Death once held us in its grip. That's it. Death did, and by the blunder of one man, death reigned as king over humanity. That means everybody. But now, how much more are we held in the grip of grace? I love that. And we continue reigning as kings in life. Enjoying our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. So we know that not every single person has a demon, but most of them. Most have some form. And just let me say this, they're prevalent in the church. <laughs> Especially the religious demons. Yeah, Who had more demonic spirits operating in them? The fishermen or the Pharisees? The Pharisees! Because the they wouldn't admit it. Yeah. They wouldn't admit. They needed help. They needed a savior. They needed the Messiah. They needed the blood of the Lamb. They needed. They says we don't really actually we don't even need the Messiah because we're keeping the law. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wow! You're double deceived. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, now you're sons of Satan. Mm -hmm. Now you're broods of vipers. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But Mary, who came and got seven demons cast out of her, said, I'm free! She had no problem. Back, that's written in the Bible. Yeah. Oh, that shouldn't be written in the Bible that Mary had seven demons cast out of her. That offends religious people. Didn't offend Mary. <laughs> Mary was happy. Yes, yes. Mary lived the rest of her life serving God, filled with the anointing. Mary was in the upper room at Pentecost. Mary was at the empty tomb. Yes. Mary saw the two angels. Mary saw Jesus. She talked to Jesus. Yes. Mary had a relationship with Jesus like no other. She didn't care. She was happy. That was her testimony. The guy with the legion of demons went around telling everybody, legions of demons came out of me. Amen. It was nothing to be ashamed of. But the Pharisees, the religious people said, oh no, we couldn't possibly have a demon. In fact, he's casting demons out by the power of fields of up, which yeah. is the name of, another name of Satan. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you guys aren't right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Satan even knows his kingdom divided won't stand. Why would Satan cast out Satan? Why would Satan cast out demons when they're his minions that do his will? And when he can send them into people, he can make them his puppet. 
You guys don't figure that out. Even the devil knows a kingdom divided against itself can't stand. Wow. And then he looked at them and he says, well, if I'm casting demons out by the power of uh -huh. Satan, by whom do your sons cast demons out? Right. Well, their sons weren't casting demons out, so I guess that ended that conversation. <laughs> Come on now, you're talking to God. Don't try to corner him. Yeah. You don't have a comeback, believe me. Yeah. Just be still and be quiet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get saved. Amen. Get saved, Pharisee. Hallelujah. <laughs> But the flesh is present in every human. And it said right there in Romans 5, 17 that death held us in its grip. That's a spirit, the spirit of death. Yeah. But Jesus has set us free. Now we're held in the grip of grace. Amen. Amen. And then Romans um, uh, 7. Look at this is an amazing passage. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 through 20 says, Paul wrote this. He goes, I know that nothing good lives within the flesh of my fallen humanity. Just say it like it is, right? Okay. The longings to do what is right are within me, but willpower is not enough to accomplish it. My lofty desires to do what is good are dashed when I do the things I want to avoid. Mm -hmm. So if my behavior contradicts my desires to do good, I must conclude that it's not my true identity doing it. Boom! There you go! It's not my true identity doing it. Because I want to do it. But the unwelcome intruder of sin hindering me from being who I really am. So Paul was saying, there's something in my flesh, even as a Christian, that can't do the right thing. Whoa. Even though I want to, I can't. Willpower is not enough. I need the spirit of the living God ruling and reigning in my life. He goes on to say in, in 21, same chapter, through my experience of this principle, his experience, I discover that even when I want to do good, mm -hmm. evil is ready to sabotage me. Mm -hmm. Truly, deep within my true identity, I love to do what pleases God, but I discern another power operating in my wow. humanity, waging a war against the moral principles of my conscience and bringing me into captivity as a prisoner to the law of sin. Wow. Ah, this unwelcome intruder in my humanity. What an agonizing situation I'm in. So who has the power to rescue this miserable man from the unwelcome intruder of sin and death? I give all my thanks to God for his mighty power has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. So if left to myself, the flesh is aligned with the law of sin. Mm. But now my renewed mind is fixed on and submitted to God's righteous principles. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He wasn't talking about now I can keep the law that I'm a Christian. He says, no. Now I can live by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's a whole new law. It's not the law that happened with Adam when Adam sinned and died. It's not the law that came with Moses that there's 613 you have to keep or you have to offer a sacrifice of blood. This is a whole new way called the kingdom. This is a whole new way called the kingdom. This, this is how if everything was moving in time to get to the time that Jesus says the kingdom is here. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. If you read two, two verses down, if you're in your Bible, you could write it down by here. Look at Romans 1, 8, 1 and 2. Romans 8, 1 and 2, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation yeah. to those who are in Christ Jesus. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life. For the law of the spirit of life. He's calling this the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from Amen. the law of sin and death. Boom! I can live by the spirit even though I'm in a body that's, that has to be crucified. The flesh has to be crucified. Still got that flesh trying to rise up. But I can now live by the spirit and go, I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit on this one. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to follow the flesh. I'm not, I'm not going to follow that old self-life. No. 
no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not having that Snickers bar. Absolutely not. No. No, no, no. 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 I will listen to the Holy Spirit. I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with understanding. I will sing in the spirit. I will sing with understanding. I will come under the anointing where the power of God is flowing. And I will learn how to live and move and breathe by the spirit of God in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And by the word of God that's been written mm -hmm. for me to follow. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So now ways to discern between needing deliverance or crucifying the flesh. Mm -hmm. This is so good. Mm -hmm. Okay? Again, demons. If you have demons and you need deliverance. This is when you need deliverance, when a person is struggling so hard and wants to be free, but cannot break the power of the evil, the bad habits, the addictions, the dark thoughts, the nightmares, etc. Mm -hmm. They want to be free so bad. But they can't. They pray, they fasted. They they tried to crucify their flesh, and they're still these things still are manifesting in their life. Poverty, lack. They've even sold, they, they, they've given seed, they've given offering, they've given tithes, and they're still like in such bondage then there needs to be deliverance. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. It's it's not something that you have to look at it under a microscope. Mm -hmm. It's just obvious. Mm -hmm. It's really, really obvious. Or if a person has a sickness, a particular, or a, or a particular sin mm -hmm. that's prevalent in their family. If everybody in the family is addicted to drugs, there's a demonic spirit operating in that family. It's a generational curse. You don't need to, I confess my sin of being addicted to drugs. I confess, use, that's not going to get you free. No. That's not going to get you free. You can bring your needles, your pipe, your, your package, your, your stuff to the altar. And I brought it to the altar and now I'm free. Mm -mm. That doesn't make you free. No. The pastor might get a pat on the back because he made you feel so guilty that, you know, you emptied your pockets. But that doesn't make somebody free. Right. When the demon's cast out and the craving is gone. Amen. Yeah. You're like, wait a minute, whoa. I don't even want this anymore. No. That wasn't me that wanted it. No. I didn't want to shoot up in my arm. I didn't want to be a heroin addict. I didn't want to... I didn't want to drink all day long. I didn't want to be a drunk. Are you kidding me? I didn't want to be a thief. I didn't want to keep robbing people's houses and breaking into their garages and stealing things. I don't want to be a thief. Everybody in my family's been a thief. I renounced it and that demon left me. Oh, I don't want to steal. I want to work and give to people now. I want to be a blessing to people right now. Oh, I'm not going to steal another thing in my life. In fact... In fact, like little Zacchaeus, I think I'm going to give back everything I stole. I'm not even give back some more. Mm -hmm. He gave back four times as much as he stole from everybody. That was Zacchaeus who climbed up in the sycamore yeah. tree and looked up at Jesus. And Jesus go, looked down at Jesus. Jesus goes, I'm coming to your house today. No, a tax collector. I'm a thief. Uh, 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 okay. He yeah. was a rich man because he was a thief. He, he yeah. was a good thief, right? Uh -huh. He was a good investor of people's tax money. Right. So he invited all his deep friends, all of his tax collector friends, and Jesus showed up. <laughs> and because Jesus just sat at the table, deliverance came. Mm, sweet. Mm. Ah. Because you, we read in the scripture, it says, today salvation has come to this house. Yeah. Yeah. The word there really means deliverance. Mm, yeah. We don't have an exact account of Jesus commanding demons out of Zacchaeus, but we do know this. That thieving spirit left him at the table with Jesus. He got set free. And then he says, I am going to return all the money that I've stolen from everybody in my neighborhood. He's saying this to all of his other tax collector friends like, you better too. <laughs> right? I'm returning all the money. In fact, I'm going to give back four times as much. 
So if I stole one gold coin from them, I'm going to give them back five. Mm -hmm. Jesus was so happy. He says, today, deliverance has come to this house. Mm -hmm. Sweet. I think he hugged Zacchaeus. I think he kissed him. I think he called him brother. I think he called him friend. That was the day Zacchaeus got set free. Hallelujah. You see, when you're doing things that in your heart you don't even want to do. No, it's a demon in you. It's a demon. Let it go. Let it go. But you have to be where the anointing is. The demons recognize the anointing and they recognize when there's no anointing. So you just can't go to any church and go, hey, Pastor, would you pray for me because I have this addiction? Mm -hmm. He probably wouldn't even know how to pray. I know I wouldn't have in the past. I would have kind of tried. I've kind of tried. Mm -hmm. but now I would know. I'm going to speak to that disembodied spirit in you and command it to leave. Many yeah. times people come up for deliverance and they close their eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. no, Because the demon knows. Yeah, the eyes right. are the window yeah. to the soul. Right. And the demon's in the soul. And the demon doesn't want them. Don't look at me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll open up your eyes. Look at me. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. at me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then it's not just the person's eyes. It's I can see the demon is looking back. Mm -hmm. And I know the demon is looking. And that's when you say, get out now. Mm -hmm. And it's the anointing that brings him out. Not loud yelling. Not hyping everybody up. Just get out. Pushing people down. Just get out. Demons recognize the authority. The anointing. That's all they will bow to. That they will not bow to any doctrine, PhD, Bible college certificate you have. They don't go into your church office and go, oh, well, you graduated from all those schools? I better come out. I better do what you say. They, laugh. they go, I founded that school and that school. I founded that school. My cousin founded that one. The demons founded it. That's to heaven. I know. I know. Jesus. So I wrote down here um, demons. Under the de demons, it says people... Oh, a sickness or a particular sin is prevalent in the family and attaches itself to the family members. Can also be a mental illness, depression, suicide, etc. Mm. Like every generation in your family, there's people committing suicide. You have to understand, there's a demon of suicide and death in the family. Mm -hmm. <gasps> no, just get it out. It's okay. Just get it out. Just get it out, right? People want to be free from this, and they prayed against it. They've maybe fasted, spent time in the Word, even speak over themselves, but to no avail. This is when deliverance is needed. Mm -hmm. Now, the flesh. Okay. The flesh is when you're operating in a sin. A sin means you're not you're not submitting to God's will. That's it. You're not submitting to God's will. Doesn't mean you're going to hell, but it does mean you're operating outside of God's will for your life. You're choosing something. You're operating in a sin, a lifestyle, a mental state, a bad habit. Or have maybe even received deliverance from some things that were attached to this, but you're not yielding this particular area of your life to God. You could have a lot of deliverance and still be living in sin in another area. Yeah. Also, you make excuses for this area of your life. And you're not truly willing to surrender to God and walk in obedience to his word, his spirit, and his instruction or his correction. Yeah. Colossians 3, 5 and 6 says... Live as one who has died from every form of sexual sin and impurity. Live as one who's died to the desires for forbidden things. And actually that word in the Aramaic means magic. Mm -hmm. Forbidden things. Now well, just dabble a little. You know. Including the desire for wealth, which is the essence of idol worship. I mean, Paul writes later on, the love of money is the root of all evil. All kinds of evil. Verse 6. When you live in these vices, you ignite the anger of God against these acts of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Crucifying the flesh requires cooperation on your part, not just renouncing. It requires denying or dying, excuse me, it requires dying 
to your own opinions, getting rid of old wineskins, closing doors you have opened to demons, and humbling yourself and letting God truly be Lord of your life. So, the first means of attack, you might say, in the spiritual realm, is a person receiving deliverance. That's number one. They need to be delivered. You can't tell somebody, you just need to serve God. But they're filled with demons. They can't. They, they, they just can't. They can't. The woman that Jesus healed of the spirit of infirmity that was bent over. He commanded the spirit of infirmity to leave her. And then she could stand up straight. I mean, I'm probably sure that somebody tried to put a brace on her at that time or make some leather strap that could straighten her back up. But it would never work. Because there was a demon in there making her spirit, her back bend forward. So now we know there's spirits of infirmity. So the first plan of attack against the kingdom of darkness, pushing back the devil, is deliverance and the anointing. That's why Jesus wrote in Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. These signs shall follow those that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. He didn't just randomly put these in order like, I'll just shoot them out there. <laughs> he didn't say, in my name they'll lay hands on the sick. First, he didn't say that first. No, he, he said, first they're going to cast out demons. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. It says, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was anointed by God, went about doing good in healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Yeah. He knew it was the devil oppressing people. Mm -hmm. That's why when someone comes up here, the most important thing right then is deliverance. They may come up and say, I need healing. Okay. And then I'm asking God, is it a spirit of infirmity? Or do they just have a cold? Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it could be. It could be either one. Mm -hmm. I mean, not every single sickness is because you have a demon in you. Mm -hmm. It's an attack against your body. But if it's a spirit of infirmity, it has to be cast out. Mm -hmm. So then the healing comes after the deliverance has taken place. Then, after there's been lots of deliverance, layers of deliverance, what you're going to be taught in the kingdom is, who, who are you? What's your identity? You have to now accept this new identity. I don't want demons to go, and then your house is clean and swept and they come back. That's one of the reasons why I release the anointing. And I've learned this. I've been trained in this way to then release the anointing to you. Release the power and authority of God to you so that now when the enemy does come back, you say, no. No. You were cast out of me. You don't come back. You don't live here anymore. No. So when your eyes are open in the spirit, you can totally recognize it's not just, well, I don't know. You know, I got this feeling of depression that just came back on me. And I don't know, was I really delivered? I released the anointing. Recognize it. Amen. Amen. If there's been a crime committed, you saw the person who did the crime, took somebody's purse at the store. They call you in. They caught the perpetrator. They call you in and they show you five guys in the lineup. And you laid eyes on this person. Yeah. And now you now are behind the glass. And they say, which one of the five did it? And you just saw it happen yesterday. You ought to be able to pick the guy out. Yeah. That's the one. That's the guy. That's the guy that did it. So you need to recognize when these demons come back that you literally got delivered from. You got delivered from on Sunday, and he's trying to come back on Monday. Yeah. Oh, it's Monday. How's you feeling, Sal? <laughs> your life's just going. Your life's just going to pot. You know, I can't believe it. <laughs> Remember what they did to you, and that he's trying to come back in. He doesn't want to be gone for twenty-four hours. He doesn't. They don't like the dry places. They don't like not being in a body, so they come knocking at the door. 
And that's why the anointing has been released. The anointing is not just, ooh, goosebumps, you feel good. It's now you've been given authority and power, joy and peace. When he comes back, say, no. Get out. You don't have to call Pastor Heather. You, you have it now. If you only come here one time, you're probably like, well, do I? Did I even get free? Yes, you did get free. But this is now when you start to become, you need to educate yourself in the spirit realm. You may have just come out of a religious church and say, I don't know everybody at my old church. And it better be your old church now because if you go back, they'll talk you right out of it. Right. Okay. I'm not even playing games anymore about this. If you get delivered and you go back to your lukewarm church, just just take the, go, go all out. Just invite them all back in. Party! Oh. Let all of them come back in because they're going to talk you out of it. Ooh. For all my friends. No, let it go. All your friends need deliverance too. Bring them here. <laughs> Take them to five up. <laughs> if they're not ready, don't shove it down their throat. Right. Don't. Yeah. No. Just show them by your free life. Oh, they're going to go, wow, I've never seen you with such peace. Mm. I got delivered. Mm. I got set free from that spirit of worry. I got set free. Mm. Like, like, you don't even get mad anymore. I know I got set free from that spirit of anger. Yeah, but I've known you since you were five years old. You always had that spirit of I know, and I don't now. It was a spirit of anger. I got set free. Huh. And all of a sudden, you'll start having validity. Because they'll see, it wasn't just a flash in the pan. It was real. It really happened. Amen. Like, they say, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. That is from the pit of hell. If you listen to that kind of indoctrination, guess what you'll think about yourself the rest of your life? I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't drank in 20 years, but I'm still an alcoholic. No, you're not. <laughs> if Jesus set you free, you're free indeed. I want somebody to stand up in one of those meetings over there and go, the sun set me free, I'm free indeed. Because I used to be an alcoholic. And now I'm not. Amen. I am free. I'm free. Yeah, yeah. And all oh, that meeting over there, they could all just come and get free. Yeah. And they don't have to pay anything. Yeah. Right. They can just get free. Amen. They can get free from everything. Amen. All the rejection they had as a kid. No, no, you can't get me free from that rejection as a kid. That's what I hold on to. Let go of it. Amen. Right. Trauma, abuse, domestic violence, hating yourself, self deprivation. Self degradation. You're always speaking bad about yourself. You can get free from that too. You see, this is the anointing. This is the revival. It's not just, oh, we're just deliverance ministry. Oh, no, 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 no. It's way, 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 way more. So much freedom is available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's grace. Deliverance is great. Hallelujah. So, by crucifying the flesh, I'm going to read that Colossians 3, 1 through 4, one more time. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above. For that's where Christ sits, enthroned at the place of all power, all honor, and all authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Your crucifixion with Christ, oh, this is good. Your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life. And now your true life. Say my true life. My my true true life. life. Say it again. My true my life, true life, true life is, hidden is hidden. Away in God. Away in God. In Christ. In Christ. Woo! That's your true life. True life. Amen. In verse 4. And as Christ himself is seen. For who he really is. Who you really are will also be revealed to you. For you are now, you are now, 
Say, I am now, I am now. One, with one with him in his glory. In his glory. Jesus! Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Yes. That is the reality. That's what the Spirit's going to try to tell you every single day. He's going to preach the same message to you. He will preach the same loving, beautiful, powerful, exciting, wonderful, invigorating message to you every single day in any way he possibly can. He'll prove himself over and over and over and over and over again. Put him to the test and prove him. Find out the height, the width, the depth, the breadth of the love of God for you. Yeah. Search it out like buried treasure. You have everything that you need in Christ. You don't have to live with a demon one more day in your life. You don't have to live with depression and sorrow, bankruptcy, bankruptcy of soul. Some people say, I've never felt joy in my whole life. Like, I never could feel happy. Well, God could make you happy. He could take away that, that old demonic spirit that just keeps everything so neutral. And take that thing off of you and fill you with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Literally, joy is your strength. When you see somebody filled with the joy of the Lord, you're going to see somebody strong. You're going to see somebody strong. The devil may come at them with a battering ram, but they're so filled with the joy of the Lord, they don't go down. They bounce right back up, and all the demons with the battering ram go flying. Yes. I'm telling you, it's an unfair fight. It's not a fair fight when you have the joy of the Lord. Demons don't know what to do with the joy of the Lord. They want you to be depressed because it weakens you. It weakens your bones. It weakens your mind. It weakens your immune system. It weakens your thoughts. It weakens your ability to resist the devil. It actually weakens your ability to submit to God. Yes. So now, if you need deliverance, receive it. Acknowledge it. Recognize it. If you need to crucify the flesh, crucify the flesh. Because if you don't, the demons will come back. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is, is that I have now seen it with my own eyes. Ooh. Even in this congregation. Mm -hmm. Where people have received deliverance. Mm -hmm. They got set free. And then they go back to, let's say they get set free from all sexual spirits. Mm -hmm. Spirit spouses. Of spirits that came in through molestation and abuse, and spirits that they 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 entertained and, 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 and slept with people when they were 13, 14, 15 years old. They were victims and then they they participated in, in these act activities and they just got so many soul ties and then they get free. And then that purity, the purity they but then the enemy comes back to tempt them. And they don't stay in the anointing. They're not grateful for what happened. They don't say they're free. Remember I talked about the four ways of gratitude. Danielle did a beautiful job of editing that video. And we put it up on YouTube today. You should go to True Grace Church videos on YouTube. She took the four points that I released last Wednesday on gratitude. And it's the way we show gratitude to God for delivering us, for loving us, for saving us, for providing for us, for making heaven for us, for being with us always is number one is serving, number two is saying, and number three is staying, and number four is sowing. And the one, the, 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 all of those, all of those are, are ways to maintain your deliverance. There's more than that. Apostle Catherine has a major beautiful playlist on her 5F Church um, YouTube page on the, the um, Revival Army playlist. Yeah. But these are things I've gleaned from her. These are things I've gleaned from the Holy Spirit. I've gleaned from sitting under and then practicing in my own life. Practicing in my own life. Because I got set free from the spirit of rejection. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that thing back. Ever. No. Ever. Ever. 
because it brought with it all kinds of junk. Mm. Ruined relationships, bad relationships, spirits of self-pity. Oh, just was bad, just like bad. So I needed to know how to maintain that deliverance for my own life and then how to, to show that and just teach that to you. But I've seen people get free in this own congregation. And then the enemy comes and he starts tempting them and wooing them back. And they don't say, okay, the enemy is tempting me. I, I, I want, I'm free. I'm going to declare my freedom. Um, I'm going to begin serving. I'm going to begin saying that I'm free. I'm going to stay here at true grace, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sow seed. Mm -hmm. And then they're off sleeping with the guy again who doesn't even know Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're off on marriage number two. And the first one was really bad. And this one is now to maybe possibly an unsaved person. Doesn't have any honor of God at all. Mm -hmm. It's like repeat. But it's going to be worse. Mm -hmm. It's going to be worse because they came back with seven more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you get delivered, mm -hmm. it's up to you to maintain that deliverance and that freedom. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will be feeding you constantly. Apostle Larry will be feeding you constantly. Apostle Catherine will be feeding you constantly. But I can't shut the door to the demons in your life. You have to be willing to shut the door. You have to be willing. And the way you get willing is to become equipped and realize, wait a minute, I've got an arsenal. You might say, well, I, I, I've only got, I've only got a, a six shooter. God goes, that's okay. <laughs> we'll start with a six shooter. We'll teach you how to clean it, load it, cock it, pull the trigger. Yeah, okay, okay. Some of you don't know that's a gun, right? <laughs> But then you get delivered some more and the Lord goes, are you ready? You ready for the semi-automatic? <laughs> now you've got 22 rounds. Boom. How do I use that? He says, you're going to use that because you got more deliverance and you passed the test. And when that demon came knocking at the door, instead of like Cain opening the door and not mastering over it, you say, get off of my front porch. Whoa. Get out of my property. Come on. Don't you come near my body with that symptom. I'm wow. healed in the name of come Jesus. On. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I'm free in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have righteous anger towards demonic spirits. Amen. God has righteous anger towards demonic spirits. Amen. You don't let them back in. But if you just say, well, you know, I'm only going to go to church like once a month. Like it's not that important that I go every time. Well, you know what? If you live in the area and, and, and if you can with any, any at all way get here, you've got to come. Mm -hmm. But at least watch online. Make it a point to watch online. Make it a point to, to receive this. Because the enemy is going to work against you. Right. You see, it's very, very clear in the scripture. Peter says this. Here's the way you do it. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. First of all is submit to God. Without surrender, yep, you can't resist the devil. You have like you just we just read there Romans seven. My willpower wasn't enough. I, I, I need I need the power of God. So submit to God. Then get all that He wants to give you. Then you can go to battle, and the Lord will make sure. The demon that you're coming up against, mm -hmm. you're more equipped than he is. Oh, really? yeah. You're not going to go up against a principality, yeah. high-level, high-level demon, and you just got delivered six months ago. Yeah, right. God knows. Yes. God knows. He's your champion. It's a process. It's like the elimination round in a tournament, right? You play the low team first. You beat them, and you play the next team. Mm -hmm. Then you play the next team, and you play the next team. Every test you pass, every demon you go, no, get away from me. I submit to God. I resist the devil. Mm -hmm. You stay. There's so many keys to stay. When you put them all into practice, yeah. oh, there's just there's just no way. Mm -hmm. There's no way the devil's going to win. Yeah. No way. And God will make sure that you now walk free. Stay free. 
Crucify that flesh, that old nature, until, guess what? Guess what? The old nature? They won't tell you this for a lukewarm tree. They'll always keep that hook in your job. The old nature can totally be crucified in your life. And you will not even surrender to it. Not for a moment of a day. Like, you literally, you don't have to sin. Pastor, no, I'm serious. You can be in God's will. 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, your actions. Paul did it. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. Obviously, he was living the life of a free man. Perfect? No. No. There were blips. But so few. Because, look, at it's the elimination round. Okay? Like, when that spirit of rejection even tries to whisper to me, out! I recognize it! Get out! Like, I don't sit there and have conversations with that demon anymore. But I did for decades. 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 It's the most wonderful thing ever. It's literally like, that one's done. That one's done. Because in, but in a lukewarm church, they'll say, no, 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 that's too cocky. No, it's not. It's confident. We have confidence in Christ. You should have confidence. And so guess what? Your life starts being so bright and shiny, filled with love and joy and peace, that people will approach you in the most random places, come to you in a grocery store. You're at the gas pump. Somebody just peeks over the pump and says, oh. <laughs> Hi. You're like, Hi. <laughs> you just, there's something about you. You're like, thanks, it's just Jesus. <laughs> Opens up a conversation. Amen. Opens up a time of ministry. Amen. Opens up a time of Inviting them to come where the anointing is. Amen. Your family begins to treat you with respect. They don't not understand you, Amen. but they will treat you with respect. Amen. They'll know, oh, she's no joke. <laughs> she doesn't play, but she sure does pray. Amen. <laughs> and if I need something, I know where I can go. Amen. I don't understand it all yet. I'm not quite ready to swallow that whole thing that she's walking in. But you plant so many seeds. See, if your family knows, your family knows like that old nature that you walk in. And then you're known as, oh, she's the so-and-so in the family. Or, oh, she's always like that. Oh, boy, when she comes over, it's going to be blah, blah, blah. We know where she's going to talk about. You know, these little conversations that go around and you don't even know about, but you know about. Yeah. And then... Now you're, you're delivered, and you've been walking in deliverance and freedom and passing tests and the joy of the Lord and healed, and and, and, you, and you get invited. You don't have to do everything you're invited to. Just let me, let me tell you that. But the Lord says, okay, I want you to go. You're going to go for an hour, and you're just going to be a blessing. And you show up, and you're just looking good. I mean, you're just, you're blessed. You know, they're used to you showing up in sweats, and all of a sudden you show up, and you're looking good. you got the joy of the Lord on you, and you're, you just, you're glowing. And, and, and you've even come with a present, maybe, for somebody. You're like, and, and you're not talking about your bad back anymore. It's a jail. And, and you're not walking in all, you know, mad and ticked off and blah, just blabbing about something. Maybe you used to be the cusser in the family, and all of a sudden the profanity's gone. They're like, man. They're looking at you like they're waiting for that bomb to drop. You know, like the bomb, the, the butt bomb, right? And it's, and it's like you're going, wow, what happened to you? Yeah, sweet. That's the night and day that they see. Yeah. And you just sweetly say, Jesus, thank you. Sweet. You're just so good. Yeah, but you were in church all that time. What do you mean, Jesus? Right. Well, I got delivered. Yeah. I received, I received yes. the anointing. And 
and the anointing's working in my life. They don't have to understand. But they'll have to admit. You're healed. You're free. It's very attractive. And I, I, I'm a living proof of this in my own family. I'm living proof of this. And so, I'm telling you, ladies, you can't lose. You can't lose if you just stay under the anointing. You can't lose. You can't lose. Just stay. Just stay. Just keep receiving. You keep growing. You get stronger. Old things will just fall off. You can get delivered just by hearing this message right here because the anointing is being released. It's the anointing. And those of you watching, the same thing. Like some of you come on and I love you so much. But you've been renouncing the same thing online for a year. It's like you're free. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. You don't have to keep renouncing the same thing. It's time to receive that you've been delivered in Jesus' name. You don't even need to come if you're, say, in Australia or something. You can just receive right now. Just receive it and then testify. I received my deliverance or my healing during that video I watched. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I, I want you all, the last the last statement. <laughs> live as the new person you are now in Christ. That's how you will live. Live, not die. Live free from all yokes and demons. That's how you will live. Live free from the control of the flesh. Tell the flesh no. No, no I'm crucified with Christ. I'm not doing that. No. 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 I have authority over you now, flesh. No. And then live in the power of the anointing. I can spell it right. Live in the power of the anointing and you will dwell in peace and joy. Yeah. That's your power. Amen. Yeah. Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. For all of you who come out tonight, God is ready to move in your life right now. <laughs> God wants to move in your life right now. Right now. How many of you were here two nights ago? Oh, I'm going to stand up now. <laughs> How many of you were here two nights ago? Wednesday night? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Woo! Yes, he did. And it's Dave. It's Dave. Hallelujah. I almost sit down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so you know it was the Holy Spirit. He's like, leave each other in heels. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> the fire came. The fire stayed. The fire remains. The fire of God remains. And it just grows brighter and brighter. Even the scripture says... The righteous grow brighter and brighter as the noonday sun. So don't say, well, you know, I got it on Wednesday, so I don't need to come back on Friday. Say, don't you want more? Yes. Yes. I want more. I want more. More, more, more. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you got it too, Beth, didn't you? <laughs> no, I said, get behind it. You get a chair, a chair. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you see the joy of the Lord. Breaks off all that old religious junk. Breaks off all that old, um, we must be quiet in church, you know. It breaks off the old way that we used to think. It let, it causes the old wine skin to just dissolve, right? And allows the new wine now to flow in Jesus' name. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand. And you're welcome to push your chairs back against the wall there. Hallelujah. We do know that the power of God is what causes demons to leave. The anointing causes demons to leave. The anointing drives sickness out of bodies. The anointing works miracles in your life. The anointing restores your soul. The anointing brings the fire of God into you, upon you, and moves through you. The fire of God 
the fire of God serves many purposes. One of the purposes of the fire of God is to burn away everything in your life that's not of God. The fire of God is to burn away everything in your life that wants to ride over the spirit in your life. The fire of God is also the passion to love him without reserve. It's the passion that God has for us, but now we have it for him. So we don't want to quench the fire of God. We don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. We want to fan the flame. Fan the flame of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And every time you're around somebody who has the fire of the Holy Spirit, the two of you come together. And the flame is double big. <laughs> Woo! The flame gets bigger. That's what's happening to her right now. That is what's happening to her right now. You see, all of us here, all of us here on the fire of God right now, we're all in the fire. She's receiving right now. She's receiving. She's not resisting. She's just receiving right now. More fire. More fire. More fire. Gigi, come to her. She was fighting. I need help. Somebody want a blanket. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If we can have a blanket person on this side and a blanket person on this side. We'll have one, one over here. One stay here and then one over here. Hallelujah. We have enough covers. You see, that's the power of God right there. God gave you a demonstration right in front of your eyes. Yes. Sweet. She's not she's not holding back. No. She's not saying, no, Lord, don't give me that fire because it's embarrassing. I could go down. No. You know, she's saying, yeah, give me more. Give me more. Give me more. You see, the fire of God is his love for us. Yeah. And, 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 and when we have that love of God in us, we not only can love him, we can love others. You see, the love of God literally drives out fear. Amen. So the fire of God will drive out fear because it's the love of God. It says fiery love. It'll wreck you. It'll mess up your mascara. Yes, it will. It'll wrinkle your clothes. <laughs> It'll mess up your hair. <laughs> the fire of God will change you yeah. from the inside out. The fire of God will leave you undone. Amen. And all you'll experience is the glory of God, and you'll come out transformed because fire burns away the impurities Amen. and just leaves the gold. Amen. And the gold is shining and bright, and the gold gives glory to God. Amen. The gold is God in you. Amen. That's the gold of God in us right now. Amen. Right now. Amen. Hallelujah. And God wants to release his fire tonight. <laughs> Again. Amen. He wants you to want it. He wants you to receive it. He wants you to have more and more and more and more. He wants to turn it up. He's not happy with the slow blow. He's not happy with me. He wants it all the way up where the clicking is going. Click, click, click. He wants it flame high. Hallelujah. He wants you to receive his love like you've yeah. never received it before yeah. because that love of God is going to transform you. It's going to be God's telling you, I'm proud of you. I am proud of you. I love you so much. That way you'll never believe a lie of the enemy about you again. When somebody comes and tell you God doesn't really love you that much, he's not that good to you. You'll say, oh, no, you came too late. I'm not too late. I'm already filled with the fire. Get away from me with your fire extinguisher. Take your fire extinguisher away from me before I set fire to you. Come on. Amen. In the black church, all they have is a fire extinguisher. We have the fire. Glory to God. That's the power of God. It's anointing. He's anointing.
anointing is anointing is here right now. So anyone here in this room that has been dealing with demons, that has been dealing with dark things in your life, things that you haven't even yet renounced, things that are still troubling you. Maybe you've gotten free in several areas, but there's still some chains in your life. There's still some things that shackle you and hold you to the past, hold you to an old identity that you had, hold you and, and remind you of it in dreams. And demons come to you in your dreams. And usually those are because you have old soul ties, soul ties with old boyfriends and, and or girlfriends or, or old relationships or old past trauma. You, it's time to be free right now. This is God's will for you to be free tonight from anything that has been holding you back, giving you a false identity. Some of you, as we read tonight, you realize there's there's a lot of things in my family. And I wasn't supposed to talk about it. I wasn't supposed to bring any of it up, but but I gotta bring it up because it's in me. It's like it's like poison came into the well and now my water's all tainted and and even though there's water there, there's still mixture in the water. And there's, there's things that have hurt my heart. And I can't break free. Like, if you're always in lack and poverty, there's a poverty spirit operating in your life. Like, no matter how much money you make, you're still in debt. Like, no, no, no matter how many bills you pay, you just accrue more. And, and, and there's, there's things that, that, that maybe somebody in your past generations spoke over this family. This family will always be in debt. Maybe they sold money into witchcraft and worked the spells over you. Yes. Yes, I have family members that did that. And I specifically sold things into the kingdom. I sold into to break these yokes. Break these yokes. It's not just sometimes it's not just enough to say, well, I renounce Freemasonry. I renounce witchcraft. There's a seed that has to be sown to break the harvest that's grown up. You know, if you have an oak tree that's 150 years old, that thing is big and rooted deep. Like it was sown generations ago. you got to do something to cancel out that thing. And now you sow into the kingdom of God with intention and with purpose. Say, I'm sowing this seed into the kingdom for me and my future generations. Amen. And you do it with intention. And it breaks that yoke. It destroys that yoke. If you don't understand these kingdom principles, you can just stay like on a treadmill and never get delivered. Never get delivered. But tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. I believe your spiritual eyes are being opened. Your spiritual ears are opening. Your heart is open. You're able to receive what God is saying to you. You're able to receive what the anointing is and how much it means to your life, your future here on earth and in eternity. See, this is the life you've always wanted to live. Amen. This is the real Christian kingdom anointing that you've always wanted to live. Not just a little dab of this gift or that gift or, or this, this healing thing. This is everything. This is everything. Does anybody here want to renounce something right now? I want you to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just right here. <clears throat> I want to renounce rage. And I want to renounce um, anger at God. Do you have any idea what you were angry at God about? I was angry at God because he wasn't doing things my way. Oh. Um, I wanted him to move faster in my life. And then he blessed me. He blessed me with my job at Sunrun. I got the job. And then he blessed me with money um, to pay my bills. And But I got mad at him yesterday. I was I was fuming at him. I was mad at him for not moving fast enough. So do you want to renounce uh, control? Yes, I want to renounce control. Yes, I want to renounce control. Yes, I do. Thank you. I detach you from what you just realized. I speak to every spirit of control and manipulation that came in through witchcraft. 
that came in through fear, that came in through generational curses. I speak to every spirit that has caused you to manipulate, try to work it, try to work God. That's been deceiving you. Come out now in Jesus' name. Out! Come out now. What I spoke to you about on Wednesday night, did you do that? Um, well, I haven't got any money. So, but now the Lord has blessed me with some money. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to sow 10% of my income into, um, True Growth Church. I spoke to you about sowing a specific seed to break off the witchcraft because of all the money that you sowed into witchcraft. Oh, okay. See, so you have, you, you, you have a harvest that's grown up because of all you said you were a witch mm -hmm. you practice witchcraft mm -hmm. and you sowed so much money into witchcraft witchcraft is manipulation and rebellion against God and so those things are still coming up so a seed specific seed will cancel all of that and the torment that's constantly coming to you because the demonic spirits have been operating in you for a long time in your mind. They've been trying to take your mind. They've been trying to take your mind and to cause your mind to be not right. Every spirit causing your mind to think ungodly thoughts about God, about yourself, and about others. I command to leave now in Jesus' name. I release you now. I release you now from those yokes. And I speak to every demonic spirit. As you sow your seed, you are free in the name of Jesus from every spirit that came through the planting and sowing into which Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I release to you God's anointing of joy and peace now. And a revelation, a clear mind, a clear mind now in Jesus' name. A mind that's clear, a mind that's free, a mind that does not have any cloudiness, any confusion in Jesus' name. I cancel all the effects of medication given to you. Now in Jesus' name, that alters your thinking, that alters your emotions, that alters your mind, alters your mental state. I cancel that now in Jesus' name. And I declare you are free from this moment forward from all of that medication that has been prescribed to you now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. broken over my children, just depression over my daughter and, and my son, and just these things I know, see, it came to just pass down, you know, from generation, including myself, you know, I experienced depression, I've been free from depression, thank yes. you Jesus, amen, <laughs> but um, I know my kids still struggle with it, and I just want them to be free from that, and also, unbelief, any unbelief that I have, I just want God to help me in my unbelief. You know, things that 
that and and what else? You said manipulation. What what exactly are you speaking about when you say that? Um well when it comes to family, I have this problem of feeling bad and you know as I had renounced people pleasing and it was just coming upon me again recently and I know it, it I was giving it to manipulation when someone makes you feel bad, if you feel kinda of giving a guilt trip and then fall into it and then so you get manipulated or yes. you manipulate well I've caught myself doing that to my children so I just want to break that now okay. you know over my children I don't catch myself doing it much anymore but I, I know it's it's there's a root I believe and yeah. I just want yeah. that broken and yeah. dealt with a lot of from loved ones right so in relationships so Right. Relationship. So I do want to renounce any demonic soul ties too, as well. Just um, that have been in my past, any demonic soul ties that came from past relationships, and also um, poverty as well. Spirit of poverty. Struggled with that. Do you? You don't have to say who it is, but do you know specific soul ties that you can think of right now? You don't have to say who they are. Um. I don't say who they are. I do know. No, but you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. what I wanted to know. Yeah. Some people come up here with this, anything, just get everything out of me. But it's so much more powerful right. when you can know exactly because then you know when you're delivered. Mm -hmm. And even a thought of that person comes up, you're like, oh, those feelings aren't there anymore. Bad, good, whatever, sexual, you know, angry. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's gone. Yeah. So then you know, then you have a very powerful testimony because it's very specific. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yes. And question though yes. about demonic soul ties. So what if it includes with no sexual relations, just a soul tie with family yeah. that you may feel oh, yeah. like that's included as well? Okay. Oh, yes. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, you can have definitely unhealthy family soul ties. Okay. Definitely. That's where the manipulation comes in. That's where the guilt trip, that's where the shaming comes in, that's where the control comes in. Right. Anybody in your life that tries to control you, they're not a God. Even the Holy Spirit doesn't come to control you. He comes to lead you. He comes to guide you. He doesn't come to control. That's always the devil's way. That's always how the devil works, is by control. Domination. Yes. And it can be by self, but it's still there. Okay? Right. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. So now in Jesus' name, I detach you from what you just renounced. Great protection. And I command every spirit that came in through generational curses in this family to be broken now in Jesus' name. Every generational curse broken. I speak to every spirit of manipulation, control, guilt. Shame. Go now in Jesus' name. Out. Out. You no longer have control or authority in her life, in her mind, or her heart, or her soul. You no longer operate in her children, in her relationship with them. Go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of doubt and unbelief. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Your voice must be silenced and you must go. Out. Spirit of unbelief, go. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break every soul tie that you have had with anyone in your life that was not godly, that was not by the Holy Spirit. And every spirit that attached itself to you through those soul ties, I command to leave now in Jesus' name on the count of three. One, two, three. Out, all of you. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's going right now. Every single one. Thank you, Jesus. In 
Jesus' name. I detach your children from what you just announced. Depression and poverty. Sadness. And I seek every one of those spirits to leave your children now in Jesus' name. They must go. I declare your children are free. I declare your freedom. The anointing of God in you flows right on down to those beautiful children. I release God's anointing to you now in power, authority. I release this anointing of God's joy and peace over you now. And then as you walk, you walk in confidence, you walk in joy, you walk in the revelation of who you are in Jesus, you walk as a mighty woman of faith, you walk as a free woman, you are not dominated or controlled by anybody or anything, but you are led by the Holy Spirit now from this day forward. May your thoughts, your mind, and your emotion, your words, even your thoughts about yourself and others now are exactly as Jesus thinks. Receive now this fresh anointing, this fresh fire. Come upon her now. Fresh fire, come. Fresh fire, come. Fresh fire, come. Hallelujah. Come upon her now. Fill her. Fill her. Fill her now to overflow it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As Rose left now. Thank you. Kim, Kim, can I get you to just watch this side of the room for blankets? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Demonic spirits work through the family so many times. So many times. Because they're the closest to you. They have the most interaction with you. They have the most influence on you. And they can hold you back. They can hold you back so easily. Mm -hmm. Like you want to fly like an eagle. And they say, no, stay in the yard like a chicken. Yeah. We're all chickens. Stay in the yard. And you're like, no, I'm, I'm an eagle. So you have to know. You have to know even with your spouse. With your children. With your mother, your father, your siblings, you must know. I'm who God made me to be. And I'm going to walk as God calls me to walk. And I will pray for you. But you cannot let anybody hold you back from your anointing. Amen. You cannot. You cannot. If you do, the Lord will say, why did you love them more than me? Jesus told Peter after the resurrection Peter brought in his boatload of fish and Jesus looked at the fish he says Peter do you love me more than these what was that his paycheck his career he had a net full of fish because of Jesus not because of his great fishing skills just like in the beginning of the ministry Jesus said, I called you to be a minister. Mm. It's only been a few days since I rose from the dead. Why are you out fishing? All right. now, what are you doing? Mm. You don't know what you're doing. Mm. You got John out here with you. You got the other disciples there. Well, I guess we'll just go fishing. <laughs> I told you to wait in the upper room. Mm. I told you to be, a, to be about everything I poured into you in three and a half years and you're going back to fishing? Mm. What are you doing? Do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. You're my apostle. I got 12 men I sowed into. The entire kingdom is riding on you. Feed my lambs. When that becomes the most important thing in your life, you'll never run out of fish. You'll never run out of money. You'll be provided for the rest of your life. But if you love these fish and your career and your renown and your family even more than you love me, you're not fit for the kingdom, Peter. I don't need another Judas. Judas loved the money more than he loved me. That's how Satan entered him. Because he loved money so much. 
Right. And then he regretted it and killed himself. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Like this anointing is real. Yeah. Like we're not just playing church anymore. Right. Like people are really going to come in here and get free. Amen. This is going to be a relevant church. Amen. Because of the revelation of the Holy Spirit Amen. and the anointing. I will never go back to an old white skin if I'm all by myself preaching on a street corner in Redlands. When everyone leaves, I will not go. I will not go back. There's something behind me. But when you lay it all down for Jesus, you'll get everything. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. Food, shelter, clothing, joy, peace, happiness. You'll always be taken care of because God has never once failed one of his children. Hallelujah. But if you love those things more than the kingdom, it's just a matter of time so you're going to be standing there with nothing going, what did I do? I traded my soul. What would a man give in exchange for his soul? When Jesus went to the man that, that God caused his, his, his crops to increase one year. So big, so big. He had so many. He had to tear down his little barns and build big barns. But he wasn't what he was supposed to do that. He was supposed to share it with everybody. And instead of the man being grateful to God, going, I can't believe how much you gave me. Are you kidding me? You're the Lord of the harvest. Whoa! He said, soul, you're so rich now. Look how much you got. You won the lottery. What do you got? Everything now. Eat, drink, and be merry. He didn't even thank God for any of it. And Jesus says, you fool. Did you not know? This very night, your soul will be required of you. And that's the night the man died. He didn't get to spend any of his money. He didn't get to gloat among all of his friends and say, look, but my crop yielded ten times what yours did. No. He gave himself the credit. He didn't bless anybody with that. And he was soul was required. God goes, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? What is it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I'm just, I'm so, so serious right now to see everybody free. Because when you're free, you don't fight with it anymore. You don't fight with the love of money anymore. You don't worry about that stuff anymore. You don't, have, you don't worry about the addictions are gone, the negative thoughts are gone. You're walking in health and wealth and wisdom and joy and peace. You got it. You got it going on because you got Jesus going on on the inside of you. What the world thinks doesn't matter to you anymore. What your family thinks doesn't matter to you anymore. But they're so attracted to the light of God inside of you. Like literally, you're Jesus' skin. Like, woo, he's in you. Amen. 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 And so when they come and they, and they want to be free, my my heart is just beyond excited. And I can't tell you how happy I am to have this anointing in my life. It's everything. It's everything. To see people free. God knows. It's for us. It's for our children. It's for our families. It's for the generations that are coming. It's for those that are walking in the Lord. And I think you've got to buy churches. Can I come in here? Come on in. Amen. 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 You realize when people when people come here before they go to behavioral health and they get free, Hallelujah. and then they don't even go to behavioral health. Yeah. Hallelujah.
God was healing her. She remembered what I said to her. You remember? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The blue hair. Right? Yeah. She she wow. contacted me this morning or yesterday morning. I was just blown away. Yeah. And little did I know she had a terminal heart condition and she has literally clinically died three times in two years. Yeah. And she, the doctor said you're terminal. She didn't tell us any of that. No. I literally thought the Holy Spirit was, you know, my mind, I was going, well, ministry, God's ministry to her soul. Well, he was, but it was also a physical healing. Because then she went back to the doctor and had these three tests, and the doctor goes, well, the first two showed there was something there, but the last one showed there's nothing there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? with regret and I want to speak over my children and my six grandchildren that they won't um, um, so yeah I want to um, renounce that and the dreams that I've been having um, that it happened Wednesday night after I left here I had a nightmare and it was I think it's a sexual soul tie that was trying to attack me in my bedroom yeah yeah, yeah. So what, I want to renounce any soul ties. I've been married three times. I'm on my third marriage. Yeah. So anything that... Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get it out. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. You are... Just sitting here free right now. Something is out right now. In Jesus' name, I can touch you and everything that you just renounced. Yes. And I command every spirit that's attached to regret <laughs> must go yes, now yes. in Jesus' name out. I break every generational curse in your life and every spirit that came in must leave you yes. now in Jesus' name. Go. <laughs> out now. I swear every single time. I commit every spirit that came in through every ungodly soul time. You are out now in the name of Jesus on the count of three. One, two, three. Out now. Go. Leave her. Every spirit coming in the night. Go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit giving her nightmares. Go now in Jesus' name. Out Leave her. You cannot come back. <laughs> you Jesus. cannot come back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I to you now. Thank you, Jesus. Freedom oh, is so Freedom is now in you. Jesus' name. <laughs> Freedom is now in yours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Have her just sit. Have her just sit. Are you okay, Gigi? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God's power is moving here right now. God is setting her free. So many people have had soul ties. So many people have had yokes that have been on them for years and years, decades and decades. Every spirit must leave her now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's been causing her torment, every spirit bringing up old memories, every spirit just disqualifying her from walking in the abundant life, every spirit of divorce I command to leave you now in Jesus' name. Out now. Out now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Out now. Out now. No, that's enough. That's enough. Enough of your nonsense now. Out. 
Enough of your nonsense now. I speak to you to leave. All of you must go now in Jesus' name. Out. your heart, your soul, your mind, your body, your spirit. I release to you your identity in Christ. And from this night forward, you will only see yourself as Christ sees you. And in the glory, you will always stand. And I declare now that God's fire will always be inside of you. And it will hold you strong. This anointing will keep you strong in the midst of tests and trials. And I declare that you will come through like gold. Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. You know, you don't even have to come up here to receive deliverance from the same way. Because so many of us, so many of us have been spoken to, demonic spirits came through those words, and we believe them, and then we live like that where they were true. And we began to adapt to those word curses, and we begin to act like we were less than what God said about us. We begin to not like ourselves. We begin to think we were dumb. We begin to think that we were not competent, that we were not capable, that we were not beautiful, that we were not loved, that we were not cherished, and we were not even valuable. 
Those are the lies of the enemy. And he will use any yielded vessel to speak those over us. But I tell you, we are work cursed proof when we are delivered and set free. Those work curses just bounce right off and go right back to sender. Return to sender in Jesus' name. None of that's true about me. Doesn't matter what anybody writes about me, what anybody says about me. Doesn't matter if they cuss me out. Doesn't matter if they say anything negative. It's not true because I know what God's done for me. And that spirit of rejection is not there anymore. So I don't believe any of the devil's lies. Any. Amen? And you don't have to either. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Does anybody else want to come? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You want to do that? Good. I want to release this word over every single one here today and everyone watching. I declare every spirit of rejection to leave every person now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of of rejection. Go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of victim and self pity, I command, go now in Jesus' name. Leave. Leave every single one now. Every spirit of depression, go now in the name of Jesus. Leave. Lingering thoughts of negativity, evil foreboding, hopelessness, go now in Jesus' name. I detach you from every word curse ever spoken over you. Put down, joke, sharp cutting word, angry in your face yelling, gossip about you, backstabbing, betrayal, from family, from friends, from church members. I command every spirit attached to that to leave you now in Jesus' name. Go out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak to every spirit that has come in and said that you're not valuable. You're not worth being loved. You're not worth being treated as a queen. You're not worth being treated as royalty. Every spirit that says, you don't matter. I now break those word curses and I command every spirit attached to them to leave you now in Jesus' name. Go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I commend every spirit that causes you to be isolated and says you're alone, that you have nobody, that you have no friends, that you have no true people in your life that really love you and are interested in your life and want to be around you and that care about you. I commend every spirit lying to you and telling you that now to go in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that tells you this is as good as it gets. Your day has already come and gone. Your best days are behind you. I command to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Lying spirits, you leave now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on everyone here, I break every soul tie every soul tie of every relationship in your life that brought pain to you, hurt you, abused you, mistreated you. Every spirit that came in that you had sexual relations with, person you had sexual relations with, that harmed you and hurt you, wasn't a God. Commit every spirit that came in to leave now in Jesus' name. Go from every single one. Thank you, God. Every single one. Thank you, Jesus. 
I speak to every spirit that's been attacking you at night, causing you insomnia, not even able to sleep at night, laying there thinking, 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 thinking. Your thoughts like a, a merry-go-round. I command now to leave in Jesus' name every spirit of insomnia, robbing you of good sleep. Go. Go now in Jesus' name. Someone here or watching online, I just heard the Lord say, I'm not even super familiar with this, but it's, I believe it's called shaky leg syndrome. Restless leg. Restless leg syndrome. Thank you. Restless leg syndrome. And and, and it constantly. It's all the time. All the it's time. Okay. Just face me. Face me. Face me. You got her, Sonny? Oh. Okay. It's all right. I want you to renounce it. It's it's not of God. You've done nothing wrong. But I want you to renounce it. You don't want that in your life anymore, do you? No. Say I renounce it. I renounce restless legs. Amen. Yes. Now in the name of Jesus, I detach you from it. Amen. And I command every spirit of infirmity and every spirit that's bringing this restless leg syndrome. You leave her now in the name of Jesus. Out. Go. Leave now. With your shaking, with your pain, irritating her, causing her to lose sleep, causing her legs to be weak. You just go now in the name of Jesus. You don't have any more authority over me. Praise God. I release God's healing to you right now, all the way from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I release the anointing now to your legs, to your body, to your entire nervous system, all the way up and all the way down. Fire of God all the way up and all the way down, burning out every single thing that hasn't been firing correctly, every single thing that's causing the spirit now to, to, to make her legs shaky, every single one must be burned up now in the fire of God. Thank you, Lord, for healing her. Praise God. I just detach that. I detach you from that and I speak healing. I command every spirit causing that restless leg syndrome to leave you now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak to every spirit of infirmity that's been attacking your body in any way. In any way. Touching your body. Causing your body not to function as it ought to. Causing systems in your body to shut down or only work intermittently. Causing poor circulation. Causing your immune system to go down. Some of you have repeated sinus infections. Over and over. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every spirit of infirmity. And I command you to leave every single one now, in Jesus' name, out. Go. Go now. Go now. Leave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Has anyone in here had repeated sinus infections? No? Right here. You have? Leanne? In Jesus' name, I send the fire of God to your sinuses right now. I release the anointing right now. I release the anointing right now into your sinuses to burn all of that infection out now in Jesus' name. Never come back again. All inflammation must leave every part of your sinuses now. 
all the way through, all the way through now, healing. Breathing is clear now in Jesus' name. God's fire. God's fire. God's fire. God's fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Sinuses? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just like it. Just repeat it over and over. Or just come. Oh, I just got over it when I went to Five Up this last Sunday. I was still experiencing it for like three weeks. Oh, no. And during service, my eyes opened up. Oh. Amen. And the pain gets left, but they have come back and Thank you. Thank you, Renance. I renounce sinus infection. Amen. Mm. Whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And any, any inflammation in your body. Yeah. All inflammation in my body. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I just detach you from what you just renounced. And I come in every spirit of infirmity, mm -hmm. bringing infections in your body, wherever they may come. You must go now in the name of Jesus on the count of three. One, two, three. Out. Go. Every spirit bringing inflammation in her body, opening her body up to infections, go now. Urinary tract infection, go now in Jesus' name. Throat infection, go now in Jesus' name. Muscle aches and pains, go now in Jesus' name. Aches and pains in your neck, Stiff neck. Waking up in the night and your neck is stiff and, and, and cramped. Mm -hmm. I command to go now in Jesus' name. Insomnia. 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 Insomnia must leave now in the name of Jesus. Your spirit sent mm -hmm. to rob her of her sleep. I tell you, you must go now in Jesus' name. Out. Leave her house. Leave her family. Go. Every tormenting spirit. Every spirit that causes you to be nervous about things. Unsure about things. Every spirit that's causing you to be even confused about things. I command to leave now in Jesus' name. Go, all of you. Thank you, Jesus. Go. I'm going to renounce um, just accusing voices that I hear throughout the day. In Jesus' name, I detach you from those voices now. Amen. In Jesus' name, I detach you from what you just renounced. And I commend every accusing voice of guilt and shame and condemnation to go on the count of three. One, two, three. Out! Spirit of Satan, the accuser of the brethren, go now in Jesus' name. Out now. All of the enemy's lies must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you speak healing over your sinuses now in Jesus' name? I release God's fire right now to your sinuses. I release God's power and fire right now throughout your entire system, sinus system, urinary tract system, muscular system, bone system, skin, derma system in Jesus' name. I release the fire of God to you now.
burning out all inflammation, burning out every abnormal cell, burning out all the lies of the enemy, saying that there's something bad wrong with you. I hear, it, I hear that you said that to you. There's something really bad wrong with you or multiple things. Go out now in Jesus' name. I release God's fire to you right now. That there's no sickness can dwell in your body. No spermity can dwell in your body. Now in Jesus' name, I speak your sinuses to be healed. I speak you to have sweet sleep at night. I speak to you to have voices of grace and righteousness and truth in your mind now. I speak that you have the mind of Christ now. I speak that you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit now. And I speak that you hear the voice of Jesus now. And I release the anointing to you now. The amazing outpouring of the anointing to you of joy and peace in the Holy Spirit right now. Perfect healing. Just take it. <clears throat> His fire is coming to your body now. His healing is pouring throughout all of you right now. I just see the warm oil of the Lord pouring upon you, pouring into you, seeping into your pores, seeping into every organ in your body, healing everything, healing things you didn't even know needed to be healed, going in and giving you strength, peace, joy. Abundant life right now. Abundant life right now. Abundant life right now. Rura kashudara barakitia. Ruka shi yanatarayana bakura barayana kushatka. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Curses of infirmities, sickness, menstrual issues. 
command to leave now in Jesus' name. Out. You are detached from every one of those generational curses and all those spirits. Go now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak healing over this arm now. I release the anointing into this arm and I say you are healed. This elbow is healed. This shoulder is healed. I release the fire of God now in Jesus' name. I speak to every muscle, every tendon, every ligament, every bone, every nerve. Healed now in Jesus' name. I command every demonic spirit of infirmity to leave her now in Jesus' name. Get off of her arm. Release your hold and go now in Jesus' name. I speak strength returns. I speak life returns to your hands. Strength comes back to your wrists. Strength comes back to your fingers and your thumb. Strength comes back to your palm. Strength comes back to your elbow. Strength comes back to your muscles. Strength back to your biceps. Strength back to your triceps. To your shoulder, to your deltoid. I speak the strength of God to be restored now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare God's righteousness over you now in Jesus' name. And I declare the healing of God is your bread. It's easy for God. It's children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. You are now free from that snake that held on to your body. Try to cripple you. Try to put you on disability. Try to put you out of commission. I declare now in the name of Jesus, you will rise up. You will rise up in Jesus' name and your calling will be revealed and you will grow so strong in the anointing and that you will be used by God in his time to do mighty and great works for God and you will destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. You will destroy the works of the devil. For God in you is mighty. God in you is mighty. He's mighty in your mouth. He's mighty in your life. He's mighty in your heart. He's mighty in your finances. He's mighty in your body. He works through you. He works through you. You yourself are a sign and a wonder to all who know you, to your family. A sign and a wonder. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Every spirit of infirmity out now. <coughs> you come out now in Jesus' name. Out. I break every ancestral curse. Spirit of death. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Out. I renounce any covenant in me. spirit that has come to her through any kind of a covenant or an oath 
against God, against her life, and against this family. And I declare you to leave now in the name of Jesus on three. All of you assigned to her must go now. One, two, three. Out now. Go. Out now. I speak total freedom to her right now in Jesus' name. Complete and total freedom from every sickness and every infirmity. Everything attacking her mind. Everything attacking her sleep. Everything attacking her thoughts. Everything attacking her body. Every tormenting spirit. Go now in Jesus' name. Thank you. Mom? Mom? Do you know anything that you would renounce on her behalf? Anything in the family line? Any, anything that, any open door that you might know of? Is there anything you'd like to renounce on behalf of her? No idea there might be. Was there sickness and infirmity in the family members and generations past that like plagued them and caused them to have similar issues as she? I have a sister in Mexico. Both her names are on the bar. And I want to say that did she told us she would rather have that Okay, you have a. I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of that. A sister that what? Okay, come, come up here just a little bit. And now, what were you saying about? And I know what were you saying about her? There was one time that she had told me something about making a vow or promise to God, and I went. I don't know exactly what it was. She made a vow for you guys? Yeah. No, 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 no. For, her, for herself. What, you don't know what it was? No, just that, I don't know whether she would rather have messed up knees than. I really don't know. Okay. I don't know. She's hurt me. Your sister? Yes. There's pain and suffering in the family. <laughs> and it says we've got a big, big family. But as you said, there's a lot of pain and suffering in the family, correct? Physical. Physical. Uh, okay. My sister Lord, going through depression. My sister Margaret lost her husband two years ago and needed to have my sister Dixie to stay with her. Sister Lupita, <clears throat> going through the, her grandchildren, going through depressions, <laughs> they're just kids. Her cousins and Do you want to renounce some of the main things that you see are operating in the family? You just said depression, you said infirmity. Just just go ahead and name those things. Remember, you're not putting anybody down when you do this, okay? Yeah, I got it. I don't know how to name them. Just say the things that you see on, on the on the family members. 
abortion. Okay. Uh, there's this tie of Catholic belief that doesn't let them grow. And I'm scared of God with it. You both know. Say, I renounce that. I renounce that. Mm -hmm. The inability to grow in the spirit and mm -hmm. know who God is mm -hmm. for them and their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I just attach you and your daughter from everything that you just renounced. I break every generational curse in this family that came from long ago that's causing sickness, that's causing divorce, that's causing abortion, that's causing depression, that's causing infirmities, that's causing weaknesses and vows in Jesus name I command every spirit out now in the name of Jesus you must leave every spirit that came in through the Catholic religion and worshiping of these saints and the, and the crucifix and the Eucharist and the, the way that they see Jesus I break off of you now in Jesus' name. I break off of this family. Any sacrifices made over you because of that, any sacrifices in that religion made over you because of that, I break it now and I command every spirit of religion to leave this family now in Jesus' name. Go. Everything that's hindering this family from coming together in the peace, in the joy, and the love of God, I command to go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Total freedom now. Total freedom now. Total freedom to all the generations alive now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I release to you this anointing of God's joy, His peace. I release to you complete freedom in Jesus' name. From all sorrow and sadness and hopelessness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I declare God's revelation of His grace comes to you now. And his amazing, perfect love, giving you hope beyond what you've ever encountered before in your life. I declare now you are free. You are free in Jesus' name. I declare that you and your daughter now, this beautiful daughter here, Danielle, tonight, from now on, the two of you will be able to fellowship in the Spirit. The two of you will be able to pray in the Spirit for your family. And you will see mighty moves of God. You will see mighty miracles of God. You will see mighty healings of God. You will see that God is giving you authority and power in your family to destroy yokes to remove burdens, and to release the anointing over the family. For the Lord, it says, now I have two. I have two. One can put a thousand to flight, but two, ten thousand in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord is saying to, 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 to Daniel, Start getting used to feeling great every day. 
Start getting used to sleeping every night. Start getting used to feeling strong. Start getting used to feeling no pain in your body. Start used, it's time for you to get used to feeling good all day, every day. It's time for you to experience every day no headaches, no pain, no trauma, no having to lay down, no having to take so many breaks, but to feel so good and so energetic. Hallelujah. And all those old lies, those accusations are silenced and gone in Jesus' name. And they're silenced over you too now in Jesus' name. And all you hear is the voice of of God's spirit and God's love. Hallelujah. I release this anointing now to every single person in this room. I declare right now that God's power and love and joy and peace comes upon you like a waterfall. Comes upon you like you are in a giant wave of his love. And his power, his love, his peace, his joy washes over you. And then another one washes over you. And then another one washes over you. In Jesus' name, I declare that it's an unending flow to you now. I declare that there's an abundance of joy in your life. There's an abundance of rain from the heavens. There's an abundance of provision coming to you. There's an abundance of revival, an abundance of anointing in your house, all around you. I declare that you are kept safe and protected as you drive, as you walk, as you exercise, as you go to your job, as you go to the store. I declare that you are safe and protected at all times. Angels in front, back, top, bottom, left and right, all around your vehicle. That you will not get in a car accident. Nobody will hit you. You will not hit anybody in Jesus' name. And that a large circumference all around you as you drive is protection and peace and safety in Jesus' name. So don't you ever feel afraid when you get on that road because God's angels go before you and behind you as long as you're going to where he told you to go. Hallelujah. I speak the joy of the Lord to you right now. Be filled with this anointing. Go out and do what God's called you to do. Walk in the freedom that he's given you. You have authority over the demonic spirits in your own life. In Jesus' name now, have you been delivered? And you have authority over that flesh as you submit to God. Resist the devil. He shall flee from you. God loves you so much. true grace. I just thank you all for tuning in and for watching. God loves you so much. Go back and listen to this. Share this. Ladies who are here, go on your social media and share this. So even if one person watches it, you might say, Pastor, nobody even comes to my page. Just share it. God will draw them to your page. Amen. And those of you watching, do the same thing. This is going to be up on YouTube just in a couple of days so that you can share it that way as well. We love you all. We praise God for you. We will be back next week. Warring women going over. Hallelujah. Apostle Catherine's book, The Secret of the Anointing, chapter one, which is what is the anointing. So I hope you tune in. Warring women, 630 Friday next week. God bless you. We love you. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. Good night, everybody.